Last year, I tried tilling up my backyard and growing some veggies. However, nothing really grew because the soil is hard and clay packed with lots of rocks. So I decided to do some amending earlier this year. I went through and retilled, but much deeper this time, removing as much rock as I could with just hand tools. I will say it was quite difficult to do so. Incredible amount of work, I can't tell you. Like for instance, even just this hole, this little area right there, okay? About, about half of these, I would say like that. Okay, so there's probably more rock than there is soil. Pulling out rocks that are almost the size of my head. Afterwards, I soaked the soil and then covered it with a silage tarp to kill weeds. I left this on through our hot summer with temperatures upwards of 108 degrees some days, which should kill all the weeds. Okay, let's see how this worked and if I can truly amend this terrible clay pack soil in my backyard. Welcome back to the Daily Grind, everyone. I pulled off the tarp. We've got it here. Eli helped me. Thank you very much, Eli. You're welcome. And we're gonna amend this. So I actually did some soil tests for my ground and I sent it into a place called Logan Labs and they assessed what I need to add to the soil. So I've got a bucket full of a whole bunch of amendments and I'll bring you over and I'll show you. Um, I'll go over each thing. Every single person has different amendments that they got to add, but I'm short on quite a bit of stuff, so. That's everything mixed together. So it's a mix of a whole bunch of things. I put it all in buckets, but this is the, all the different stuff that is in here. Uh, magnesium, sulfate, uh, and then sulfur because I've got really high pH of the soil. So when I sent it in Logan Labs, they just sent me a list and I'll put that right here of all the things that I have to add that they wanted me to add and kind of the, you know, you can see kind of what my, my soil looks like. All right, good morning, everyone. So Eli and I dumped about five or six uh, wheelbarrows last night. I kind of raked it out. I realized I needed more. So this morning, woke up kind of early and I got about seven more, I think. We're gonna go ahead and rake this and get this even. So this is just the first layer of compost. I plan on adding much more for the actual beds, which will be separated with walkways. I then wet the compost and covered it with a tarp once again for a week to allow some decomposition and for it to merge slightly with the soil below. One week later. All right, now we need to measure this off. We've got some little stakes here and some string to be able to measure out the, the beds. Um, so let's get to that. I gotta take off this tarp. Well, it turns out we've only got 17 feet. That's all I can really get out of this. And I cannot get it much further this direction because I've got these trees here. So looks like everything's gonna be 17 feet, not 20. So that's gonna make, you know, calculations a little difficult when planting, but maybe we can extend that direction It'll be the start of the bed there. It'll go this way. It'll be the start over there. Same thing here. Now I've got a good, and then I've got it over there. So I've got this boxed out. Now I've got a, you can see that it's over a little bit from where I had tilled. So I might come through and just do a quick little tilling and remove the rocks. So if this point to this point is the same distance as that point to that point, and also that point to that point is the same as this point to that point, then I know that I've got a pretty even box. 
Um, I mean, it could be a little off, but I, I, I think it would be a pretty good indicator it's, it's even. I grab my drone just to check, and sure enough, it's pretty much a perfect box. The last couple days, it took me actually three days to do this, but I was able to till up the rest of this and extend this out to where I needed to be. And then I also tilled up a little bit over there that I had pulled back. So now we've got 18 feet and 20, I believe it's 21 feet. Um, I'll have to remeasure, but there we go. I was able to pull out all the rock and that's really all I'm doing with this tilling. It's not really about breaking up the soil and getting it softer. Many, many times of putting compost over is what's gonna actually soften the soil and make it better. Um, also the amendments and stuff that I'm putting in. I am not tilling to be able to grow in this soil. Although the roots will get down in and they will utilize the soil, but mainly it's just gonna be building up the compost layer and making this a much better bed. It does take a long time. It's a lot of work, especially with using hand tools like this, but I was able to till this up and get the, the rocks out. Now I've got a lot of this uh, grass on top. That's okay. That'll just be more organic matter back in the soil. Um, but now it's time to dump these rocks. And by the way, I want to mention, I, I, I didn't get them all up. There's some on the ground here that I missed throwing in, but got a whole bunch of rock over here that I tilled out as well. You can see. So that's, that's from this side that I haven't put in the wheelbarrow. I'll pick that up at one point, but for now, I think I'm going to go get this dumped and get some compost on top of the soil here. So let's get to that. All right, so next I'm gonna measure out each of the rows here. I'm just gonna put out my measuring tape. Make sure we starting right at the end so we get a good measurement, right like that. All right, so that started here. So, so there's the start of the first row. So this is a growing bed. We're gonna come out, we're gonna do every 36 inch. So right here is 36 inch, so I'm gonna put that staple on the ground. Now, I think I'm gonna go back a little bit because that was just tilled up, so that won't hold very well. So there we go, there's one staple. Next, we're gonna come up, we're gonna do 22 inch. So that's 36, that's 58. All right, so we got 36 plus 22, yep, that's 58. So I was right on that, plus 36 equals 94. And there is the next bed. And right here I wondered why my math was off and I had to extend the beds. I'll show my mistake later in the video. All right, let's go get some more compost. I wanna show you what I'm doing. All I'm doing is coming around this one Make sure it's nice and tight. All right, so we looped around that one, and we come to this one, loop around there, and we can move it all the way back over. See, and we'll move it all the way over to that one, that pin over there. There we go, so there's one bed, there's a pathway. And now I know I can walk through this pathway without compressing the beds. These are gonna be pathways. I didn't think, I did the math on it. I was kind of set on 36 inch beds, but I didn't do the math properly and I came to here and I did all this, but I just realized this is where the end of my tilling is. And if I do 48 inch beds, I get one less bed, but they're wider beds and it comes to here. 
that's right where at the edge of my tilling. So I'm going to come back through with the measuring tape and we're going to scoot these pins over. There's the beds. We've got one, two, three, four beds. They're 48 inch wide. That comes out just right. Exactly what I originally had done the math on. And then I did it last night. I was tired and I forgot that I did that. I was just going off 36, which I had measured out from before, not realizing how long this was. So silly me, I should have written it down. But yeah, 48 inch bed. So that comes out perfectly. And there we go. So before we bring the compost in though, I got to go through and broad fork each one of these beds. This is the broad fork. It's got four tines on it. It's just opening it up, allowing some of that compost in. This will aerate it a little bit and it'll make it just fine. So step on it. You want to really get those deep, as deep as you can. So I'm just standing on it, wiggling, and then I can lift. Oh, rock. Look like it. So, then you come back a little bit. Oop. You gotta get the balancing technique down. down. So, rock, and then lift. Use the weight, rock, and lift. And that just aerates the soil a little bit. All right, Eli came out to help me. So I was gonna do this tomorrow, but we've got some rain coming pretty soon, probably within an hour. And so I wanted to get the compost on top of what I just uh, broad forked. That way it doesn't compress it. This will help keep that from happening. We've got quite a few of these to fill up. Thanks for the help, Eli. You're All right, bring it over. It's raining right now. I'm feeling it coming down. They say it's going to be a pretty heavy rain coming soon, but you can see I've got the paths here. These are stepped up a little bit, and so it becomes almost like a raised bed. So water's going to drain off and into here, which is going to help keep these from getting waterlogged. Uh, I do have a problem with drainage here in this uh, soil, so this is going to help having these up off the ground. And every year, I'll add more compost and every year this is just going to get higher and higher and deeper and deeper of a bed so it's going to look really good. So I need to do at least one session of cover crops before I plant any veggies here. The cover crop will help incorporate the compost with the soil below and also help establish the beneficial microbes that help make soil good. What I'm going to plant is buckwheat. It's really quick to grow. It only takes about a month, a little bit longer before I can chop and drop. That's to get some roots in the ground, a little more organic matter, kind of incorporate everything together and hold this structure, basically. I'm probably overseeding, but it's just a cover crop. Here I'm raking in the seed, which proved not to be the best way of planting buckwheat, apparently. And let's go ahead and look at the date. It is July 19th, 
so that way we can keep track of how long it takes for this to pop up. So I'll bring you guys out, of course, when it does. Two weeks later. Well, unfortunately, we are now two weeks since I planted this bed and put the cover crops in. And while some of them came up, I've got little patches of the cover crop coming up. It's really bare throughout most of this, a couple of them spotty. And I think I know the answer of why. This is a pretty uh, mulchy compost. Unfortunately, and that does not hold a lot of moisture. Now it does underneath the compost, but the compost itself stays pretty dry. So, I mean, this is bone dry. But if I dig a little deeper underneath, now it's all wet down there where the soil is. So because this is a deep compost, that hasn't had time to break down. I put the seed in right away. It's mulchy compost, so it does not hold moisture. It just evaporates. So unfortunately, I believe what happened was I, I, I'm just not getting enough moisture here for those seeds to sprout. They're not sitting in moisture long enough. It's drying out on the surface and the seeds are pretty much on the surface. I didn't sow them super deep. I just scratched them in. And so I think that was the issue. Um, so I think I'm gonna have to cover this for a couple days, maybe a week to kill off the cover crop that I've already got here. Weeks later. Okay, now that we killed off the original cover crop with two weeks of tarping, we are removing the tarps to see what it looks like. And it looked great. All right, so first I'm going to start with this bed with the cover crop. I'm going to do a mix of two things. I've got buckwheat, which I tried before, and uh, the sun hemp. Okay, so those two are going to be really beneficial to the soil. And last time when I planted, I just scattered the seeds on top. I, I feel like they didn't get down in, and they, since they were sitting on top, they didn't have enough moisture. So I ended up getting this. This is something that I can put little holes in, and then when I scatter, some of those seeds will fall down in. Hopefully, that's the idea. And these are about an inch apart, which is fine. So I decided to leave two of the beds still covered and only plant cover crops on two of them because I want to test out some cover crops on the other two beds that are more winter cover crop varieties. Time to plant. By the way, the date is August 18th at the time of this planting. So the idea of this tool is put a little bit of dirt or compost in it, wheel it, and it's going to lay a thin layer of compost on top of the soil, uh, also even it out. And we should get decent germination at that point. I think that's my new favorite tool. That thing is awesome. Check this out. Look at how smooth that is. So one thing I noticed is because it's smaller holes, it's not dropping some of the larger chunks because this is mulchy compost. It's dropping a lot more of the finer particles. And so that really even this bed out made it really smooth. This would be great for planting. I think I'm going to do that with this before I go ahead and plant the peas because that's going to really even this out. Um, that was awesome. I'm I'm amazed by that. Now let's get to planting the cream peas here. So usually these things are 300 plus dollars. They're very expensive. Now this one isn't super wide. They make some that are much wider that are expensive, but I got this on Amazon. It was right around a hundred dollars, I think, and it was really good. I, I It works great. So to save some money, I will link, if you guys are interested, I will link in the description section below so you can check this tool out. I really like it. All right, let's get to planting the Texas cream pea right here like so we're trying to keep the edge on the line right mm -hmm. look, keep that. i know keep it on the it's a no no it's not look there we go got to keep it on that edge okay now we got to make the trenches
what we're doing is we're putting one every about two three inch somewhere around there so we're just dropping along these trenches these cream peas are a great cover crop because they fix nitrogen in the soil however we might be able to harvest some dried peas from them before the winter so a win-win we're just going to go through and cover these back up like this so it is august 23rd not too many days after i planted here and i've already got sprouts so all these that are coming up right now are the sun hemp that's not the buckwheat the buckwheat has little broader leaves that's the sun hemp and it's not all come up because i spread out quite a bit of them but uh there's quite a bit coming up though so this is the first day and it does look like they're along rows so i think it's the ones that fell into the holes when i made that uh, the holes with that little thing so i think that's the first ones to come up because they're just right in a row all right guys it is august 28th everything has come up with the exception of a few holes here like this long hole stretch all the way here we got one popping up here and it's so weird so uh, there it looks like there's another one here but it's so weird because this all came up this row pretty good there's a couple little holes but uh, most of this center row came up but the edges if you see there's space there and there there's a little space there um, we got spaces all along on this row which is weird so we don't have all this popping up you know I, maybe it's a water issue we did have 108 degree temperatures for a while and it could have just dried out before these were able to pop up and i find it interesting because a lot of these popped up like a week ago maybe even more and we're still having some randomly come up so they're a little slow some places looks like this is coming up like i said um so there, some of them are a little slower than others so maybe like i said maybe it was a moisture issue we did have rain last night and the temperatures have now cooled and we're at today is going to be 91 degrees so that's that's pretty cool comparably i have come through and i've thinned out this row but the beans are doing well over here this is really cool so all this has come up this is the mixture between sun hemp and buckwheat and the buckwheat has now come up you can see the difference this is buckwheat the broader leaf this is a sun hemp the thinner leaf okay and you can see them so they're spread out kind of evenly in between but they've been coming up in rows you can see these rows and that's where i use that tool to kind of poke holes in so when i casted the seed the seed was allowed to drop in to those holes and nowhere else really has it come up. I believe that we're now at the point where this is gonna be really good soil. And we're gonna pull up a little bit here. I wanna show you guys. So when you pull this under, look at this amazing soil and it's soft. I can by hand get down pretty deep and that's all really good soft soil. Look at this. That is not hard whatsoever. That is really good soil. And so that is keeping it nice and fluffy under there. Uh, this is really the way to do it in clay packed soil. I got down deeper than just the compost there and you could see even the clay was, didn't look like clay anymore. It was nice and soft. Microbes are growing in here. They're, they're keeping things fluffy. They're, they're, you know, it's, it's healthy soil. So that's, that's amazing. Thanks for watching everyone. If you guys like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates. Also, if you could hit the like button, it would really help me and the channel out. I will see you on the next video. Now you guys try to escape the daily grind. All right, so today is September 2nd, just a couple days later. And I decided I was gonna come back and show you guys even though the video is done. We've got a bunch of new sprouts here along this line, so. This should be pretty well filled out now. Um, and then same with this back row. We've got pretty good uh, germination now. I was worried about all these holes. Um, there's still some gaps, but they're not that bad. This should fill out pretty well. And then this is growing really well. Check this out, guys. We've got like third sets of leaves, fourth sets of leaves on this sun hemp. So this is really thickened in here and we should get pretty good 
cover crop going here. I think it's a little over seeded. Uh, we've got a bunch of sprouts that are really close together, but that's okay. Uh, one other thing I want to mention is I just came through and I pulled back this part of the tarp over here and I seeded this with tillage radish. So that's another one I'm going to try. I'm trying all different types of cover crops here just to see what is best, but um, we'll see how this tillage radish does. Um, I'll bring you guys back in a couple weeks for updates on this and hopefully the sprouts i haven't seen any sprouts yet but i did plant it only two days ago it should take a little bit of time but i did put a bunch of holes in here um, i can show you guys the process of what i did in another video so thanks for watching everyone i'll see you guys in the next video